The political system has not debarred women from vying for elective positions. There are no legal barricades against women. But why are women still taking the back seats when it comes to leadership positions in Nigeria? Does good leadership reside in gender or ethnicity? A lawyer and founder of Project One, Bisayo Busari Akinadeju, is a Nigerian with strong commitment to nation building, and she joins us on the show this morning. Good morning, and thank you so much for joining us. I, I hope I pronounced the Aki. Excellently well. Oh, thank you so but... much for having me. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us, by the way. So now, let's ask, you know, uh, first of all, before we, you know, ask why women are relegated to the background, you know, you have... Uh, an NGO, should I call it an yes, NGO? An NGO? Yes, an NGO project. Well, what is it all about? Okay, so thank you for that question. As you rightly said, my name is Bisa Obusari Akina Deju, and I call myself in Nigeria. I try to introduce myself that way. Mm -hmm. Over the years, I realized that um, we, there's, if there's anything that is missing in our society, it's what I call political education. And I wanted Nigerians to really understand what politics is really all about. You know, we're talking about women involvement today, and it actually has to do with how or you understand politics and how you think you can play in it. So I took it upon myself to educate Nigerians more about what politics is all about, about what it means to actually be a citizen of any particular country. So Project One is an organization that is set up to instill um, what we call the right leadership values in Nigerian citizens. Uh, today we talk about leadership, the gap in leadership, uh, succession plans, and how a nation is being built. But uh, leadership do not just come upon you. It's, not, it's something you learn, it's something you grow into, it's something you practice, it's something you get better at. Mm -hmm. And so these things do not just happen in a day. If you do not have ready leaders, if you do not have prepared leaders, it's not just going to come from the sky. Our leaders are from the followers. Mm -hmm. So Project One goes about from the cradle, uh, primary school, secondary school, instilling in the uh, young ones the right um, leadership values, preparing them for when they are old enough to occupy positions. So when mm -hmm. it happens to them, you won't just talk about who I was anointed for the position, but you will know I've been preparing myself to mm -hmm. lead my people. Okay, now uh, briefly tell us, you know, th that's actually a good one, you know. Uh, can you briefly tell us, you know, how far your, your, your NGO has actually come? When did it start and, you know, the journey so far? Okay, so officially we were registered as a, an NGO in 2016. Oh, wow. And then we started actually with a, I started with a campaign called Ami Nigerian Campaign. And I would like to just briefly talk about that, you know, growing up in Nigeria where a lot of people think that, uh, Nigerians are known for corruption all over the world, that our reputation is very negative when it comes to traveling out, when it comes to immigration. And so when I was going to have my first adult travel outside Nigeria, mm -hmm. I, I told myself, I'm not going to wait for you to look at my green passport and judge me that I'm from Nigeria. You know, there's this general discussion that when you're from Nigeria, uh, if they're going to check everybody for two minutes, they will check you for five minutes. So that time when I was traveling, I put on a muffler that says I'm a Nigerian. And then, you know, the, the, the feedback was very different. As I was um, approaching the immigration officer, almost everybody on the queue was like, oh, Nigerian, green, white, green. Oh, I have a Nigerian in my office. Oh, I have a Nigerian friend. Oh, I would like to visit Nigeria. And I realized that most of the times, the negativity, the, the wrong energy about this nation is with us more than with outsiders. And that's how the campaign started, where I believe that every Nigerian should be taught the pride in national identity, be proud of who you are. Look at our music, look at our hearts, it's all over the world. Everybody wants to collaborate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But in-house, if you want to hear Nigerians talk about Nigeria on social media, you will get all the negative vibes. Mm -hmm. But if you hear outsiders talk about Nigerians, they want to know you, they want to it's wear what to you're wearing. A prophet so is really, not respected in, in his own, own town. <laughs> so what we now need to get back to our own people to let them regain the confidence we think we've lost for different reasons, for you to wear your green, white, green with pride, for you to go anywhere in the world and raise your head. Even if there are bad Nigerians, there are bad people all over the world mm -hmm. and in every country, it's just the narrative we need to change and it has to start with us. So speaking on narrative, you focus on like making sure women are involved in politics. What would you say is why is this still an issue? I mean, this is 2021. And women have been, you know, pushing for more inclusion. I mean, recently we just won the case in court, but yet it still feels as if, you know, women are pushed aside when it comes to politics. 
what would you say is the main issue or the main reason for yeah, that? Yeah, thank you for that question. And I really love that because it's a discussion I love to have with people. When it comes to women involvement in politics, would realize that uh, it's not just a Nigerian phenomenon. It's a worldwide um, thing. Women all over the world, that's why we talk about gender equality in different nations. And I always like to make a quick reference to even the United, big United States of America. It's taken them years for them to be coming into inclusion of women. Now more particularly an African nation where women are normally thinking or, or, or thought to be the home builders and should be at the home while the men go how to lead. But if you really go down the issue of African and Nigeria, would realize that women have played very significant role in politics, in governance, even at traditional levels. Yes. Uh, recently, when the last uh, Alafin pastor mm -hmm. of uh, Good Memory, a lot of people had to refer to it that the very first Alafin on your kingdom was actually a woman. Wow. So that doesn't come to the fore because a lot of people downplay on it. A lot of people don't put out the story. And over the years, men are taking over the stage. Nigeria has produced about 14 head of state slash presidents uh, in the last, between independence and today. There's been no woman. There's been no deputy president or vice president. Yes. And it's not because politics is not made for women. It's the way we have channeled it. You know, I got involved with um, one or two movement area there and then you look at the hours maybe if you have to go into meetings that are going to midnight yeah. if you're a married woman and you have children and everybody's wondering which is what you want to do with your life the societal uh, limitations are there but what i believe is nothing stops any woman from vying from a position in nigeria because yes we do not have the legal restrictions to it and i also want to make reference to I, i'm going to come to it because okay. to this question this is is it really that men are the ones pushing women out or women are the ones actually pushing, them pushing, pushing themselves out? Because if you look at it, the constitution does not say a woman cannot buy. It puts yeah. out the criteria. If you're qualified for it, have you gone for it? And talking about the pride in yourself and the self-confidence, are we confident in ourselves to stand up to say, I want to go for this position and believe that I'll be supported? So where there are prejudices in the society, it has also affected those who will be the actors those who would want to run. So you don't want to run because you already, you, you've defeated yourself before stepping out, oh, I'm a woman, yeah. would they accept me? Take, for example, Nigerian presidency. Everybody says, oh, why are women not vying for that post? You already said, oh, would they vote for me in Nigeria? Who would want a woman? Is Nigeria ready for a woman as a, as a president, mm -hmm. really? So there are so many of these mindsets we need to get down, and we need to push more. This current election going on at the different primaries, how many women have stepped forward to be put in place. So it's always sometimes about us. And then when we push, I believe that at the end of the day, we get, and women have been doing fantastically. I love this 35% um, inclusion. It's to encourage. But shouldn't it be more considering that, you know, uh, women actually make up most of the votes yes. of the electorate? It really should be, but it's always a gradual process. You don't, because of where we're coming from and the history, it will take a while before you have uh, and I think we've come, we've come of age, really, to get to this point where more women are aspiring. In the next election, in 2027, you will definitely see more women standing up, especially when they see the outcome of women's performance in this current election. Yeah. And when you have more advocacy, more uh, enlightenment telling women, you can actually do it. Mm -hmm. I always like to refer to this woman, Jacinda, uh, in New Zealand, okay. uh, yeah, where, yeah, where she emerged yeah, exactly. and all that. And young, you know, even uh, here in the North, you know, same similar thing is happening. Talking mm -hmm. about in Admiral's the person who won the gubernatorial, yes, yeah, the fantastic. Mm. So really, it's it's something we need to push for. It's something we need to stand up for. Something we need to believe. My general popular saying to everybody is, uh, really, leadership does not reside in any particular gender. Yeah. So, and uh, I think that in a specific uh, position, if I want to look at Nigeria at this time, with all the things going wrong in this nation, this is a time for women to step up to political positions because so many things are going wrong. And when things go wrong in your family, sometimes you need a woman to come forward mm, and calm things down. Definitely. We want Nigeria to move to the next level. We need to involve more women in decision making because the way we think really, we cannot differentiate, we, we cannot um, run from it that it is different from the way men would rule. We don't rule the same way. We don't think the same way. But we could work together. We could collaborate. And when you have a woman at the helm of affairs, it's always a very fantastic um, output. I think Nigeria needs more women in political positions. All right. So can you tell us more about, you know, the outreach, you know, uh, you do uh, 
what's it called? Uh, Project what? One Project and their Nigerian National campaign. Yeah. So okay. fantastic. I, I, I love that too. And I like to talk more Nigerians about that. At Project One, we believe in starting from the cradle. And like I said, most of us today are not vying for positions. Most of us in my age category would say they promise us that we're the leaders of tomorrow. But yeah, he is. Nobody has handed it over to us. They don't want to leave the position. Power and not understanding power is what, is what has kept us yeah. from aspiring and from getting into this position. Nobody will give power to you. You have to go for it. You have to, you have to go for it. You have to take it. You have to step forward for it. And we realize that for anything to change in this narrative of, oh, they are just occupying positions without giving space for us, we need to put these values right in the heart of these children. So we go down to the cradle, Pride in National Identity, where we clothe babies in their Nigerian clothes. Do not forget, Project One has like um, three core values, which mm. is patriotism, integrity, and um, self-reliance. Patriotism for me, you can aspire to lead people that you do not believe in. You can aspire to lead people that you do not care for. Even those who have led us, sometimes you wonder if they really care about the man on the street or about the average man that has no name or no history. So we need leaders who understand what leadership really means, who understand service. So we go to primary schools, we teach them these values of what it means to be a leader. We teach them about the history of this nation. We compare with other nations and the beautiful things we can bring into Nigeria. So as, as students, right now we have 10 approved schools in Life City in Abuja okay. with 200 students wow. going through the leadership trainings. These students know that by the time they're turning 18, mm. they do not only going to, they're not only going to get their PVC ready to vote from that age. They're already thinking, we have competitions, we have role plays. What if you were the governor of your state? Mm. So from that tender age, you're already thinking, what are the mineral mm. uh, resources available in my state? Sure. How do I attract investment to my state? They're not doing it when they get into the position. Mm. They've started working at it. They've started writing manifestos, what I would do, what do I need to do? What were they doing that hasn't worked for us? What can we do differently? When these people are 18, in the next time, four or five years, some of them will be 18. Uh, in the next 10 years, some of them will be ready to become governors. They will be ready to become uh, members of the House of Reps. But they are prepared. They already have a mind of where the nation should be going. And that's one of the things we do in those areas. For women in particular, I believe that, and that's where the self-reliance aspect of Project One also comes in, we believe that I, it's difficult, especially during this election period, you can't go to a man and say, no, don't take that 2,000 naira and sell your vote. You're selling your future. But the reality sometimes is that some of those people, especially in the local and rural areas, depend on that money to survive. Sure. Yeah. So when you are telling them, don't take the money, you're selling your future, they are looking at you like, well, my family needs this cup of rice to eat for this night. So if you don't empower people, poverty is a mindset that will keep you down mm. and will let you sell what you think you can will say, say your tomorrow for today. Mm. So we try to empower women and we, uh, women, not just women, everybody generally, mm. but then women especially, they will say, when you train a woman, you have trained a yeah, whole nation community. because they have the children, they are also catering for and all that. So we have these programs, branding and packaging of agricultural products for Nigerian women, education in that line. And we also do uh, what we call read it and learn for young persons. You know, violence is out there, unrest is out there, unemployment, um, okay. the desire and the need to jackpa at this time <laughs> yeah. is also very, very high. You can't take it out. I'm never against anybody leaving the shores of Nigeria. I even advise that if you have to leave, if you have opportunities out there that works for you, just remember that wherever you are, you're a brand ambassador of this country, wear your color with pride and bring good news back to Nigeria. But if you are going to stay in Nigeria, you must know how to tap into the what I call the circle of wealth. Because there's money in Nigeria, we cannot shy away from it. It's probably not just touching everybody. So if you know how to tie into the circle of wealth, with 220 million Nigerians, you wonder when you get to the airport and you see a lot of white people flying into the country, mm. you're wondering, oh, I thought we have so much insecurity. Mm. I thought there's no money in this country. They are coming in because they've seen opportunities. Mm -hmm. Project One is positioned to make Nigerians Every possible Nigeria that we can come in contact with see the possibilities of making money and getting empowered so that it can stand when it comes to building the nation, when it comes to being patriotic, when it comes to um, ruling. And we have the Hanu Ami Nigerian Conference where we also appreciate people. In the last, um, about two weeks ago, we had the annual conference where we honored uh, the memory of uh, late Dora Akonyuli for what she has done. And this is just to encourage other Nigerians that whatever you're doing for this nation is not forgotten. People yeah. like Patai Wake Kumi, the national flag designer, 
has currently been placed. I was placed initially on a 12 month stipend where my, my organi organization was giving something to them. But right now, what we're doing is setting up a foundation in the honor and then to let everybody know that the flag is something we can carry. But I can't say so much about it so mm, much because definitely. it's all about Nigeria and then we can keep talking about it. Okay, so coming back to women in, <clears throat> women in politics, would you say there are certain measures that have been put in place to support women? You know, it's easy to say, oh, 35% affirmation approved. That's just in writing, but what are the other advocacies and sensitive outreach that has been done to say, okay, as a woman now, I want to go for a position. I have the support of my party. Or especially other women other, as well. Most especially other, because mm -hmm. you know, they always say, women and a woman is another so woman's enemy. problem yeah. another woman's enemy so yes <laughs> Yeah, okay, thank you for that question too. You know, I like this um, this concept of when people say women are women's uh, greatest yeah. enemy. I don't really think so. Right, right now in this room, you're a woman, I'm a woman, and yeah. we like ourselves and are working together in one way or the other. But the truth is this, um, women could be worse critique of each other. Yeah. Well, because you, th you see your own, most times you, you project your own strength on the other person. So when you're in an office environment, just before I go straight to the other question, mm -hmm. when you're in an office environment, uh, when you tell your boss there is a man that you want to go for, let's say you're pregnant, you still want to go for antenatal, the man will probably say, no, you know, just go. But the woman thinks, after your antenatal, come back to the office mm. because yeah. she's more yeah, of a judge totally. because she thinks of her own strength as well. So mm. sometimes the enemy of each other plays out in that way, the way a woman will critique the other person. I think there are measures already put in place. The push for 35% inclusion are encouraged. Uh, recently, one of the political parties, too, without actually mentioning him, had their nomination forms um, slashed uh, in prizes to yes. encourage women yes. participation. And then I think those are measures that people must consciously put in place to encourage more women participating in politics. And at the same time, I would say when a woman step up for position in power, I would want to see more people supporting, not just women, I would like to see men supporting, men pushing on, men encouraging. And I would also think it's time for other African women who had emerged as leaders in their different countries as well mm -hmm. to uh, take up the campaign and advocacy to other nations to say, I've done this and I could do better, you yeah. could do better. We've had fantastic women in the past in Nigeria as well, who could also come up, people like Koko Joeyala, mm. to support other women. And when I say support, put your full uh, back support on the uh, uh, at the back of the woman to say, I'm pushing for you, I'm rooting for you. So I think we need to do more as women for ourselves, but most importantly, you might have to be the one to take the step forward and let others okay, support. You, you said something earlier about the slash in price when it comes to party tickets. Now we know that um, in as much as many women are empowered, you know, if you're slashing a ticket down from, let's say, 100 million to nomination from, sorry, from 100 million to 50 million, if we're being honest, how many women can access 50 million as compared, million. Mm, as compared to the men that, okay, you know what, they could do this and do this and then the money would come. But for women, you know, we're still pushing for empowerment. And even when you get the empowerment, 50 million is like a stretch. In a huge amount of money. Yeah. Well, for me, on that, I would probably say that um, the 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 cost of running for political offices sometimes might not have to come from your direct pocket. Not um, if if the people on the street yeah, and if there's uh, so much power on the street mm. really want to support you. Mm. I remember when uh, President Buhari was going to run and everybody in Nigeria, <laughs> one little child, if you went to drop money to say, okay, mm. we're buying the forms mm. and all. I think when people believe in a cause, I plan to run for a political office in the future in this country. And I do not think I have um, a reservoir of money kept somewhere to compete with those who have the bully, bully of hands yes. and then the real power. But I believe when it's time, it's not just gonna be a politics of money because, but you can't take away money from politics. You have to move from place to place. Logistics is enough to even come, you're not to talk about the form, yes. the nomination form. But I believe the empowerment, uh, would come. And I do not want to think Nigerian women do not have money. Quite a number of Nigerian women have mm. a lot of reserve. Mm. They know how to keep money. Maybe mm. they're not being flat way and about it. Yeah. But really, I, I, I think it's actually an incentive if you have reduced the price to say, we're giving you uh, a welcoming position, a welcoming platform to participate. 
It's not because they didn't have money, that's why they didn't get the funds. For those who didn't get the funds at this particular time, most of it is consideration. What are my chances? Exactly. They've looked at mm -hmm. it and you've, like I said, most times you'll defeat yourself yeah. even before competing. So most people shy away from it, not because of the money, yeah. but because yeah. they were not sure of that. They stand a very good chance. Right. Of now, now, most of these political parties and even the government, you know, coming out to say that, you know, they're doing this for women, this for women, they're encouraging women to come out and participate. You know, yet you have them, you know, giving women uh, minor positions, right? Is that enough? Is that enough? Because I actually know of one or two women who, you know, have, have and are contesting for the president of Nigeria, but they're nowhere to be heard. Do you understand? You know, so uh, some people would actually say, you know, uh, these men actually do whatever it takes, you know, to still relegate us into, to silence us and also relegate us into the background. Is it enough? Is it enough? Like the 35 percent, like you said, I said yes, it earlier, is not enough. I, I, I mean, I would it's say not if, enough. if you're trying to show full support, why wouldn't any presidential aspirant speak a woman to be his Exactly. Rights? You know, you're talking about the APC. I know a, a, few, a number of, you know, uh, presidential aspirants that are female, you know, but we're not seeing them anywhere. Yes, we're not seeing them. They're not even on the top first 20 or first you know, 30 category. No adverts on the road, no... Nothing. Not on the news, nothing. So are you, is no it that women are not any serious? Media outlet, yes. Not even on social media, there's no campaign, nothing. It's just like, oh, one time they say, I want to run for presidency. And then it's That's quiet. That's it. Okay, so to that, thanks. I, I have a slightly different view. Okay. And I think that um, you fall and rise on the strength of your own ambition and um, passion. If I want to be the Nigerian president, if I were contesting in 2023, and there's a reason why I'm not contesting in 2023, because it just doesn't happen in a day. Mm. Nigeria is a country of 220 million people. Before you can um, attain a bit of that popularity among a whole lot of people, you have a whole lot of work to put into it. And we can't, so that we don't fall into that same error of thinking that we need the men to be able to do this. If you want to do it, do it and stand on your own. There's this, um, uh, uh, this principle that says that if you keep thinking that they need to give it to you, they need to support you, you might never have it. That's why I kept saying you need to go for it. Mm. Which means if I want to run for presidency in 2027, I will not start in 2022 or in 2023, this is 2022, to start talking about it. I've been talking about it since 2020. And mm. it's, it's going on because it is gradual. Nigeria is big. And for you to cover it, you need resources like we talked about. You want to go on social media, it's cost a lot of money. You want some of these Andrews to push it You want I'm, the newspapers. I'm, 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 you I'm want sorry this. for you know, disrupting you, but what role does tradition have to play with this? Because you know, yes. when it comes to tradition, you, know, uh, you have them saying a woman is meant to be taking care of the family in the house and not you know, uh, rubbing shoulders and with so the men. Because it's the same woman who trains the man that ends up becoming the president. So I don't know why the same woman cannot be given a chance to show what she can do. Yeah, it, it, there's prejudice. We can't take it away. There are cultural uh, barriers, there are traditional barriers, there are rules. And some of these times, please, I, and I love what you said. You said women are the ones who train these men. Okay. These same men. I started uh, a, a group at a point, and I was focused on the boy child. Everybody focused on the girl child. And I'm saying you're focusing on the girl child, but you're forgetting that this girl, no matter how much you give all the training to her, if she ends up in the house of one very bad boy, mm. can, can totally derail Definitely. and destroy her. So we need to focus on the boy child mm. as well. So for us as parents, when we're raising our kids, and I'll say this to mothers, you need to start putting that values in them so they don't see that it's the girl that is washing the plates mm -hmm. in the kitchen while the boy is playing football mm. outside. Because these are things that create these values we're talking about. While our parents have had it, is our time to change the narrative. Is our time to push our children that are girls forward to make sure that they are occupying positions, which is one of the things Project One is trying to do. Mm. Like let girls take the front stage, not in competition, but let, let's see their strength. Mm. Don't push them to the back. The, your, your best competition is yourself. And that's why I say even as much as it looks like those, those traditional limitations are there, 
we need to push, we need to support ourselves. And I hope uh, uh, maybe in the next, uh, after this year's election, when, when I put out my campaign out there, you, you, you see how it will probably be a little different from the way we've run it as women in the past, mm. because it has to be a bit aggressive because it's never happened before. If you see when um, Kamala Harris was coming up, the pump has to be there. It has to be there because you're not currently occupying positions. Today, when you're talking about those who are leading in terms of uh, these primaries, you're mentioning names that you're already familiar with. Yes. It's difficult to remember other names. So for a woman that has not actually attained the limelight and for a society that thinks that leadership is by revision, I tell people leadership is not by revision. If you keep saying what experience does this person have, that's why we're where we are today because if the experience they have has not taken us to the nearest and the best yes. place, then why are you leading by revision? Vision. We need someone with a vision. And if you're able to convince others that this is my plan for Nigeria, this is what I think I can do and achieve with this nation, then at that time, you can actually embrace change. And you, I can say you are ready. I always tell people that when we are ready, you would see the difference. When Nigerians are ready, they are ready. We get easily distracted by, you know, when they, if anything is happening in this country, we just need to throw one other juicy news out mm -hmm. there and then mm -hmm. everybody gets carried away. But I think that we can do better. Mm. I'm not saying the men are not supporting us right now. I think women can do better. If you're going to do it, you, your strategy, politics is all about strategy. Either you're a man, either you're a woman. Your strategy must be on point. Your entry point, your strength in letting people know you will not, because they're also vying for positions mm -hmm. and you can't blame mm -hmm. them if, if they're not supporting you. The other men are vying, they want to win. They're not there to play. So if you are in there as well, you can't go in there expecting them to support True. you. You go in there to it take fight. it. Take it <laughs> so fight. you take it in a way, if you have to go on every social media, you know, sometimes, True and I'll just mention, talking about strategy, some people get controversial mm -hmm. just for the purpose of getting of that getting popular, that. because people yeah. need to know you, you know, and know what you stand that for. I question because, you know, uh, some of the women that I know that are vying for president, you know, they get bribed with something less and they take it. Yeah. Yes. Because they feel, I'm sure they would have, you know, brainwashed them and told them that, like, you know, they will not win, win so take it, this so or, take, you or you lose. Do you get? But if we see more women coming up and fighting, you know, fighting for, you know, these positions. Uh, let me give you, <laughs> let, 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 let me ask that, I'll talk, talk about that. You know, I was... Yeah, with some group of people recently and they were talking about this position and then they told someone, you know, you need to step down. Uh, you might not be able to get this at this time, but you need to step down. We'll give you something mm -hmm. else mm -hmm. or we'll give you something. You, you just, you get something mm -hmm. very, and the word that the person used very. was something juicy. Mm -hmm. And, you know, where I was, I was chatting with a friend and I said, what it tells me is people going into political positions are not actually going there to serve. If you know the reason why you are going to occupy a particular position, no one will come and offer you yeah. something, oh, you get this benefit. Because you have a focus. You have something you are going for. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm running, and I always try to tell myself, say, I'm going to be the first female president of Nigeria. It's a goal for me. I won't step out to contest uh, for presidency, and someone would say, okay, come and be my, my, my senator. You know, yeah. People say it sometimes, like, oh, why don't you start from the local government? I tell you, if I want to start from the local government, uh, I should have started 20 years ago. Yes. Because if I want to wait to start at the local government, then I won't become the Nigerian president or the first female president until maybe when my, I'm in my 60s. So for now, when I'm going for it, I have to go for it with all the full force that I can and not settle for anything less. And I would say this happens not just at the political level, even in the universities, even in the schools. One of the things we're trying to change, back in school, I took a very um, interesting position in the office of the vice president or assistant secretary general. Because if you look at associations in school, you will see that um, the, the president of any school association is the guy. Is the guy. And if they're going to offer any position, the assistant secretary, yeah. the assistant or the vice president position will go to the women. I was so about it, trying to tell everybody, you know, we can do this. It doesn't have to be a man. And in retrospect, I can proudly say when I was handing over, because I actually occupied the office of the vice president. Two reasons why I was studying the office of the vice, on the second in command, is because people give you that office because they think that office is less um, important or less stressful or not that in the limelight. Right. So it's fit for women because, yes. you know, they don't probably have the capacity to lead at that mm -hmm. forefront. And I told myself, I'm going to get into the office of the vice president of my faculty as a law student society in IFE at that time and make a difference and let them know that you could be a vice president and even be more known 
or not not in competition but in the projects you're able to achieve and when i was handing over I, I always say it's a very good record i handed over to the first president female president on the faculty so fantastic my being a vice president that wasn't just dormant that wasn't just hiding behind the shadow of the president encourage other women in the fact in the faculty to vie for position and out of five uh, contestants and four men and the girl, she emerged the first president mm. uh, of, of the faculty of law because she saw that it is possible for a woman to lead and lead with purpose. And I think this is more of the news we need to put out there. When we see a woman leading specific or, 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 or fantastically in any sector, Mm. We need to promote it. We need to talk more about it. We need to shine the light on it. We need to encourage our daughters right from the house to say, my daughter, what do you think about this thing? Mm. So they learn to assert themselves mm. and not shy away or hide behind the men. Because naturally, it could be there, a woman, a girl could be a bit timid, a bit shy sure. and all that. You need to push them out there. You need to tell them you can do it. You need to go. I have a lot of books in my house mm. about women who had led in the past in the traditional sector, yeah. in the political sector. And I try to teach other people, you have, seen this, have you seen this woman? Mm. Have you seen this person? How was she able to do it? We read and study about them from Dialin Salif to to even uh, Hillary Clinton, mm. to Kamala Harris, look at her strength, look at her weaknesses, and tell yourself, how can I be a better version mm. of this person? So we need to start identifying women who are currently in leadership, women who are aspiring to be leaders, and make a difference, and let that difference stand out. I'm talking about nation building today, not because I'm a man, not because I don't have other uh, things that could want to pull me down. Sure. I'm a lawyer, but mm. the, the goal for me is this yes. nation can be built not on the strength of men only, mm -hmm. but even a woman uh, can actually make this nation better. And I say it, every nation needs a mother. So are we, Nigeria are we, are we, is it safe to call you a king maker? <laughs> <laughs> yes, because, you know, it's, it's actually funny how, you know, uh, both of us have actually vied for positions, yes. you know, in our respective schools. School. Rosemary, I'm actually going to ask you, have you, <laughs> have you even thought I, about I, it? I, I never tried contesting. I just... Uh, I never tried. Con I mean, you just see the, the men are they're always they're so always, ready. No, <laughs> so uh, so no, you no, just I, pull yourself And if you go for political meetings, exactly. they won't finish they until 2 a.m. at all. <laughs> so you, are, you start <laughs> thinking, they okay. They you. Just, <laughs> right. No, but when we have more women mm. in power, I mm. think there will be one or two changes. I'm just looking at that time mm. when you put those. Definitely, your, some of your meetings will run late into the night. Mm. But we might need to change a whole lot of system sure. yes. that discourages participation of women mm -hmm. when you get in there when you're bringing that's why i say every, the nation needs a mother really mm -hmm. when you get in there you can put in system that will work and favor, favor the women. every other person yes yeah, so sure. okay thank you so much uh for joining us uh mrs Bisai your busari i cannot date you excellently pronounced <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for joining us it was an absolute pleasure thank you so much and i'm yes. so happy to yes. meet you ladies yes thank you awesome.